What up, what up? Wimbush here. Today I'm excited to show you guys how I made this. Now I'm using a whole bunch of programs to make this. I'm using Demearth, Real Creator, Cinema 4D, Redshift, Pixel Labs Clouds, and put it all together in After Effects. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Okay, so to get started with this tutorial series, I'm using Cinema 4D R21. I'm gonna get started using Dim Earth 4 here. And what I wanna do is show you guys how you can build out your terrain, but using actual real world map data information. And so to do that, I'm gonna go to Google. I was researching and I found this cool place in Switzerland called Matterhorn. And click on that. And then let me click on my Google Maps. And the reason that I'm doing this is because I could copy and paste my location into Cinema 4D to pull this map data from. So if I click down here in my lower left hand corner, I see I have my terrain. You can see it has some really cool terrain in here. Here's Matterhorn right here. If I click on 3D, you can see we have a really nice mountain peak in here. And so what I wanna do is I wanna pick a location which there's like this little inn on the side of a mountain, which is crazy here. So if you look up here, you can see what the hut looks like. But if you look over here on the left-hand side, the hut actually has an address to it, which is really cool. Because we could go here, we could click copy address. And then back in Cinema 4D, if I go to Geocoder, um, Geocoder tool, just hit Control V to paste it, make a pen. And Dim Earth should automatically bring in those terrain lines. So that was quick and fast and easy. So what I want to do now is let me pull this up here, my attributes window. I want to come down to my objects. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So I'm going to make my width 6,000. And let's make my height 6,000. And then also, if I bring up my, if we look at our polygons here, let me bring up my display. You can see that we don't have a ton of um, excuse me, a ton of information in here. So what I want to do is I'm just going to jack my subdivisions up until we get a lot of detail in here. So let's say around 800. Oops, 800. There we go. Somewhere around there should be pretty good. So I go back to my regular shading, and if I come down to remapping under here, we see. Um, height amplified we can actually drag this up to really exaggerate our mountain range so let's probably just pick somewhere around 60 50 somewhere around there should be pretty cool so if I zoom back let me hit H on my keyboard we're all the way back so this is our geometry that we're going to be working with and so the next step is we want to bake out our height information from here so that we can bring it into world creator so what I'm gonna do is where my dim earth object is here in my hierarchy, I'm gonna hold down control and I'm gonna just left click and drag to make a copy of it. Then I'm gonna hold down the alt key and kind of hide this right here because I wanna make this an edible poly. So I'm gonna hit C on my keyboard. Now we have an edible poly. I'm gonna erase the pen here, hit delete. And I'm gonna delete my material. And I'm gonna leave my UVW map on here, my, uh, my texture tag. So now what I want to do is make a Cinema 4D material by just double clicking down here. And then I can actually name this one height because we're going to use this to pull our height information from our terrain. So if I double click on my material, I'm going to turn off my color, turn off my reflectance and turn on only luminance. And now under my texture, let me come under a gradient and click on my gradient. And what I want, I want 2D V and then I'm going to turn off cycles here. And then next to gradient, I'm going to click this little arrow down. And then instead of smooth, I'm going to just do linear. And then I'm going to click and drag this onto my object here. And as you can see, we have grayscale information, but it's not exactly mapped to our terrain here. And so what we want to do now is click on our texture tag here. And under here, under projection, we want to make this flat. And now you see it's all whited out. And that's because we have to come up and we have to make it expand over our entire terrain here. So we go to tags and then come down to fit object. And now you can see that we actually have the correct grayscale information mapped across our terrain. 
which we could use on World Creator, or you could use it in any program, Unreal, Unity, anything you could use to build out your terrain. And so we want it to be a little bit more precise than what it is here. And so what I want to do now is I want to come up to my edit in the upper left hand corner, come down to project settings, and over here, you'll see where it says linear workflow. Watch when I click this off, you'll actually see a change on my material here. See, now we're getting exact information from our blacks, which is our deepest, um, our deepest valleys here. And then the top of our peaks or the white up here. So now the next step is we want to bake this out into a PNG file so we can bring it into world creator. So what I want to do now is come back up to my, um, my hierarchy window in the top right hand corner, come under tags. I want to make sure I have my object selected, but then we go under tags, come under material tags and bake material. And so from here, we have some options, what kind of format we want to use. I'm going to use a PNG and then under file name, I'm going to select where I want to save this. So I made a folder earlier tutorial images, and I'm just going to name this one. I'm going to name it dim dm and then height map and then click save like that cool and then under color depth i want to make it 16 bit and under my width and height um since i'm bringing this into world creator i believe the highest resolution i could take is 8k 8k might be a little bit too large so let's tank let's knock it down to like 6k so i'm gonna do 6144 by 6144 and then over here in my options tag, I want to make sure I click on luminance. And now let's click preview. And we should see what our baked out imagery is going to look like down here. So that looks pretty good. It's going to be at a low resolution. That's just so I could quickly show you what it's going to look like. And so the next step from here is just basically to bake this out. And you'll see in real time, it's scan lining our material that is baking out down here. And if you look in the lower left hand corner, it's actually showing you how long it's going to take to render this out. So since we are doing like a 6K image, it will probably take like a minute, maybe a little bit under, maybe a little bit over, but it usually goes fairly fast. Okay, and it took 44 seconds. So let me click open where I have my file saved out here. There we go. So there's our PNG file. If I double click on that, this is our terrain data that we mapped out from Cinema 4D. And so the next step from here is to bring it into World Creator. I'm going to manipulate it a little bit, but the main reason I'm bringing it into World Creator is so that I can make masks for when I bring it into Mixer and start really kind of blending in my materials. And so next, we're going to go into World Creator. Okay, so I have World Creator open now. I'm using the latest version of 2.3.0 F1. And so when you open up World Creator, this is what your terrain is going to look like. And it's going to be at 2K 2048 by 2048. Over here on my right hand side, let's bump it up to 4K 4096. Zoom out here a little bit. And then over here on my right hand side, right under that where it says custom based shape properties, you want to click this little button here and then go to edit shape. And what I want to do here is I want to flatten my entire terrain. So let's click flatten, click yes. Now everything is completely flat and we're gonna bring in our data that we got from Dim Earth into World Creator. So I'm gonna click done editing shape. Then come back over here, my top right where it says areas, I wanna add an area. And so over here, you can see that it has a small square, it's 2K. And all we have to do to make it fit is click the fit to terrain size. And that brings it up to 4K here. And then under show blend map, I'm actually going to turn that off. And then right here, right above that, where it says has height map, let's turn that on. We'll have another parameter under here called height map properties. And this is where we're going to load in our height map that we pulled in from Cinema 4D. So let me just find that image that we have. There we go. Dim height map. And then it adds the luminance tag automatically to it in Cinema 4D because we used the luminance we had that checked on there so let's click open give us a second to load in and now you see we have our terrain but there's a little bit of fall off on here so to fix that we want to come over to border blend range drag this all the way to the right 
and now we have it clipped all the way to the edge. And so over here, under resolution, let me zoom in here on my terrain a little bit. We could bump up our resolution of our terrain here. So bump it up once for 2K, then I'll bump it up again for 4K, and that should be good. If you bump it up too high, it might be too much for you to work on your system, depending on your system specs. But 4K should be a good resolution to work at. And so from here, oops, as you can see, when I was trying to move my camera around, I actually moved my terrain around. So let me hit Control Z, and then come up here in my top right hand corner and click the lock button. So now when I navigate around my scene, everything is locked into place. So that's a good tip right there. Always lock it after you do that. So now what I wanna do is for my level step, I'm actually gonna bump this up once to seven. Just add a little bit more detail in here. And then for my height scale, let's bring this up to like maybe five. There we go. So now we can really see our mountain ranges and peaks in here. All right, cool. So now we can manipulate this a little bit so that when we start adding materials on there, we can really get some nice blends in our materials. So what my next step is gonna be, I'm gonna click back on surface and right beside base, we have filters. So I'm gonna add a filter, click add again. Then let's find, um, let's do mountains since we're doing mountains. So I went under hills, click mountains, and I'm not gonna mess with any of the parameters. I'm just gonna leave them at default for this example here, but you have a whole bunch of attributes that you can play around with to kind of fine tune what you really want. But I'm gonna leave it at default and just click add. And then let's go down to, I like adding sediment. It kind of smooths everything out like sand. Let me bring this out a little bit. Let me see what sediment complex. Yeah, that looks a lot better right there. A little bit more detailed in there. So I'm gonna click add again, and then I'm gonna come up to erosion, basic erosion. Let's add some erosion in there. Actually, I like the deep erosion. Let's see what soft erosion looks like. Yeah, I kinda like the deeper one a little bit better. Um, let's bring the strength down just a tad bit. There we go, something like that should be cool. So I'm gonna click on add and close. And if you wanna mess around with these up here, you can see that we have arrows. So if I wanna look and see what it looks like with deep erosion first before sediment complex, just click the left arrow. And actually I do like how that looks. So I'm gonna keep it like that. So now we're gonna move on to adding materials to this. So now over here we see the paintbrush. Let's click on that and then let's add a layer. And then under here, under textures, I'm just gonna click add. And then I'm gonna click on world creator here. And then let's start with, maybe we'll start with cliff. So I'm gonna click that. And then down here in the lower right, I'm gonna click add. And now you can see that we have our nice cliff textures over top of our terrain. We can add another layer on here, maybe the mud. So I'm gonna click mud and click add. Now we have our mud texture on top, and then maybe I wanna add some snow on top of here. So I'm gonna scroll down to my snow, click add again. Actually, I'm gonna click add and close because that's all the materials that I wanna use. So click add and close. And now you see that we can start blending our materials. Like it's gonna start from right to left. And so since our snow is the on the right hand side, that's what's gonna actually like engulf the entire terrain. But we could easily start adding some um, adding some mask and detail into here. But first, what I want to do is I want to come under tag, and I'm gonna name this one snow. I just want to start naming my layers so that when I export these, I know exactly what is what, and that could actually uppercase so I could really it really stands out. And then my left hand one here, I'm just gonna name this one base. So I have my base. I have mud and I have snow. So I'm gonna click off the snow for right now because I wanna just work with my mud layer. Let me zoom in here a little bit. And what I like to do is 
Come down here where it says cavity. I usually like to click on cavity first and do either convex or concave to kind of see what kind of results we get. I kind of like that convex look. Yeah, I like the way that convex looked on here. So I'm gonna click on convex, maybe play with the steps a little bit. Kind of get a nice blend in there. Maybe bring up the strength a little bit. And if you really want to get crazy with it, you have all these other attributes down here that you can pick from. But I kind of like the way that this is looking like that. So let me leave it. Yeah, I'll leave it like that. So I'm just going to do convex. And before I go any further, just for um, just for reference, I kind of want to make this look a little bit better here. So if I come under my general tab, I could do, um, I have some texturing properties. And so I could go, I like clicking all these on, like height based kind of smooth this out a little bit try planar i'll leave that default let's add a little bit of noise on there you're not going to really see it too much but it just helps blend it in a little bit and then this is the big one down here for eliminate tiling watch when i click this on you can see that our materials are actually blending better and they're not tiled so let me pull in here where we might be able to see a little bit better so right now, I have Eliminate Tiling on. If I click it off, you can see that our materials were tiling before. So that just helps our textures look a little bit better when we're working in World Creator. I just like doing that because it makes my reference look a lot nicer and it gives me a better idea of what the final output could look like once we start bringing stuff in the mixer. So I'm going to go back to um, textures over here. Click on my snow. And then I'm gonna go maybe concave for this one. Start missing. No, let's see what convex looks like. That might be a little bit too much. Something like that maybe. So we're kind of like capping our peaks there. And like I said, this is strictly for reference. So even if it doesn't look 100% great in World Creator, we can make it look better using Quixel Mixer. And turn down my height scale a little bit, like so. And so, you wanna go to the World Creator YouTube page to really get an idea of how to use all these attributes over here. But just for this reference, I think we're in a good spot to export this out. So what I wanna do now is I want to come up here in my export window and I'm going to click on where it says raw for select format. I'm going to come down here to PNG, make a PNG 16. And before I export this, I want to flip the Y. And what this is, this is going to export some terrain data from World Creator just in case I want to use it in Mixer. I mean, I'm probably going to use the original because it has um, more height depth information in there. But in case I want to use this for mixturing inside of Mixer, I always like to export this out. So I'm just gonna name this one WC height map. So this is gonna give us a PNG exported from real creator of our height map data. So click on export there, give this a second to render out. And just to reiterate, we wanna flip the Y because once we bring it back into Cinema 4D, if you don't hit that, then it's gonna be inverted and it's gonna be upside down. So make sure before you export, you hit flip Y on there. And then from here, once this is done, we're gonna actually export some heat maps. So now that it's done, I'm gonna come over to heat maps, where it says select type, come down to textures. And I'm actually, I'm gonna click off my base. I don't really need a base layer. What I want is the heat maps for my mud and my snow. So I'm gonna leave these two selected. Make sure I click on global flip Y click that on click export and then I'm just going to name this WC heat map click save and give this a little bit to export everything out and so what my next step is I'm going to bring everything together in Quixel mixer so once this is done I'm going to see you guys with mixer and we'll take it from there okay so I have Quixel mixer open I'm going to start with a new mix I'm gonna just name this one tutorial. Keep it specular at 4K, click okay. 
Okay, so now we have our plane here, and what I wanna do is start with the ground plane. So I'm gonna go up to my upper left-hand corner under local library. Let's look at some of the textures that I have downloaded here. There we go. So let's start with this one that's called Construction Rubble. Click on that one. Give us a second to load in. And I'm actually gonna raise up on my right-hand side here where it says Repetition. I'm gonna raise this up by like 30 because we are gonna be doing the aerial view. And so I like, you know, just repeating them a lot so that they're really small in detail. And then my next step is I wanna add some rock layer. And this is where I'm gonna start bringing in some of my heat maps and stuff. So let's do Rocky Cliff. Give us a second to kick in here. And then what I'm gonna do once we have that is down here in my lower right hand corner, we have a button here that says add mask yet. So I click on that and then I'm going to click on this little circle here with a square around it. Click on image and then I'm going to bring in my data from, see I have two options here. So I can either bring in the height map, the 6K one that we did from Cinema 4D or we could do the one that we did from World Creator. Let's see. Let's see what the one from Cinema 4D looks like first. So let me click open. And then what I wanna do from here is come over here and click on my material. Then I'm just gonna bring my threshold up. Let's bring this up to like six. So that looks, that looks decent right there. You can maybe even bring it up to seven. And then I'm gonna go back to my, my rubble down here. I'm just gonna raise this up, maybe like 50 by 50. So it's a lot of tinkering. Let's see what 100 looks like. Yeah, something like that. And we're gonna start blending in materials, so we might, we're not gonna really see a repetitive pattern once we're done. And so that looks pretty decent right there. Let me go back to my mask here. Let me see what the one from Real Creator looks like. I'm gonna click open here. Yeah, so it's a little bit softer. I like the more sharper looking one that we did from Cinema. So I'm going to start with that one. There we go. So yeah, I'm going to use that one as my base. So now I'm going to start adding in some of the detail. I'm going to use this texture called Mossy Rock. Let me click on this one. And then I'm going to add in, remember we made the mud heat map from World Creator. I'm going to actually use that one on this Mossy Rock one here once this is loaded in. So I'm gonna add another mask to it. So let's use the one that says mud. Click open. Okay, so we're not seeing it and that's because we have to raise our threshold here to match our threshold of the bottom, um, our bottom material here. But once we raise this up, you can see that it looks really crazy and spiky. That's because we have to wrap our material around our base so it starts blending in. So right here on my right hand side where it says wrap the base, just slide this all the way up to one. And now you can see that it's blending in to our material here a lot better. Then I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna tile this one. Let's say like 75 by 75, something like that. And then from here, it's just kind of playing around with these options over here, just until you find something that you're they're kind of happy with. So I just usually drag these up and down just to kind of see what they're doing. So it's just kind of adding these little splotches in our area here. Yeah, I think that detail is gonna be about what we're gonna get from that one. And so if I wanna fill in this a little bit more we can also, here, let me go and make another one. So I'm gonna to go to Mossy Rock again, and then I'm gonna add like a noise to it and just start blending it in on my own over top of the World Creator mask that we made. So add another mask stat, come over to, where are we at? Click on this icon here again. And this time I'm gonna go for maybe noise purlin then I have to raise up my threshold again on this one, wrap the base, and then start playing around 
with the noise purling here. Raising up our amplitude a little bit. Then I'm gonna come back, click on my material. Maybe let's do this one 50 by 50. Something like that. We can remove the base detail. And instead of from below, maybe let's try from above and bring this down into negative. No, I like it the other way. So let's try from down below. Kind of fill these in a little bit. And then I'm gonna click on my diffuse. Just kind of pick something here. Kind of blend it in a little bit better. Same with my specular. Raise up my radius a little bit. Bring my threshold down a tad bit. So what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of blending in materials and kind of find something that I'm kind of happy with. Bring down the alpha channel a tad bit. So something like that I think will work. I'm going to bring this up maybe 100 by 100. I'm just going to tile it like crazy. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my snow layer over top of this. So I have some snow that I downloaded called One Swept Snowy Stones. Let me click on that. Give this a second to come in. And then I'm going to use my snow map, my snow heat map that I made from Real Creator. And bring that in here. So let me bring this up. bring in my heat map so the one that says snow there we go so same thing just gonna wrap it the base I already brought my threshold up now I'm wrapping it the base so we have it on our peaks here maybe just move out the radius a tad bit move down preserve details just raise up our frequency a little bit so just really playing around with blending in this material. I'm going to tile it up a little bit here. Let's do 75 by 75, somewhere around there. And then I could blend in my snow even more, kind of similar how I did my other material. So let me actually, instead of using snow, I'm just going to use a solid. So let me click on solid, make this white. And then let's add some noise to this as well. So I'm gonna go with a simplex one here. Raise up my amplitude. And you go something like that. And so from here, it's kind of just playing around with some of these attributes here. And actually this one I wanna do, mm, yeah, let's try this one from above. So we're gonna take it to the negative threshold and kinda of just have it going off the peaks here. And then trying to play around, bring this up to my very top, then bring down the alpha just a tad bit. We'll do some preserve. Actually, I'm gonna leave my preserve down. Then go back to my other snow layer. Maybe knock down the opacity here as well. So I get something that I like, which I think that's looking pretty cool there. Because we could really start, once we bring in the lighting and everything and redshift, we could really make this start to come home. So what I wanna do now is, maybe I wanna make this a little bit wet down here so it doesn't look so dry. So I'm going to add a liquid layer, bring my threshold up just a tad bit, maybe for my diffuse, let's make it maybe a little bit wider, like an off-white here. And then for my radius, I'm going to drag this all the way up. And then for my moisture here, let's raise the threshold up to make it a little bit moist here. Raise up my radius. 
like so. So, yeah, Mixer is just all about playing around with this stuff and just having fun with it. Somewhere around there. Raise up my surface. Mess with my depth a little bit. So, I think something like that. I think something like that's looking pretty good. So, my next step from here is to send this off to Bridge. So, before I do that, let me hit Control S just to save it. Because I want to export this out as an X, um, not an X, but an AK image. And so I'm going to show you that here. So I'm going to go under File, come over to Export the Library, make sure I have everything clicked on here. And I'm going to name it Tutorial for my category. I actually have a Wimbush category in here. There we go. And then for my tags, I'm just going to click Wimbush. And then here under resolution, so this is what I was talking about. So if I go over to 8K, you see that it says that the 8K export is considered experimental. And so you want to make sure that you save just in case you crash it because it is experimental. But I've been doing it and it's been working out perfectly fine. And so I'm going to export this as 8K. Click export. And now this is going to send everything over to bridge. And then from bridge, I'm going to bring it all into Redshift and Cinema 4D. So this is going to take a little bit since it is an AK. It takes around a minute or so. And so I'm going to catch you guys. I'm going to bring open um, Cinema 4D. I'm going to open up Bridge. And then I'm going to show you how to bring it all together in the next step here. Okay, so I'm back in this Cinema 4D. I deleted my original Dim Earth object here. But I'm keeping the one that we made an edible poly. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete my baked material tag. And I'm going to delete my texture. Because I'm going to just use the textures that we just made from Mixer. So to do that, I'm gonna open up Quixel Bridge, then come over to this left-hand side here. You'll see a tab that says Mixer. And this is gonna have our materials that we made. This is the one that I just made for the tutorial. As you can see, it's called Tutorial. And it's gonna come in kind of funky. What I recognize is if I'm using like mask and stuff from outside sources, it usually shows it this way, but it's fine. Whenever we bring it into Cinema 4D, it will look fine. So I just want to make sure my export settings down here are right. So my texture resolution is 8K. My texture format, I'm going to use a PNG and export to Cinema 4D. So now what I want to do is I want to come back over to Cinema 4D. Make sure I prep my scene. So under edit render settings, I want to make sure that I'm clicked on Ridge Shift or else my materials will come over as a standard material, which I don't want. I want it to come over as a Ridge Shift material. And that's all we need to do in Cinema. Make sure I have my object selected. Then come back into Bridge. And just click Export. And you can see it's saying Export to Cinema 4D. Converting 7 over 7 textures. So once that's brought over, it's automatically going to map it onto our geometry back here. Which, depending on your texture size, we're using AK. So it's just going to take a moment or so. So once this is done... We're going to go into Cinema 4D and we're going, we're going to start bringing everything together. All right, export successful to Cinema 4D. I could close this out. Come back into my Cinema 4D here. Actually, let me open Bridge back up because for some reason, whenever you make your own materials from Mixer and then take them to Bridge, then bring them into Cinema, it doesn't bring all the materials over. And so we could easily fix that by coming up to our open folder button here now I can close this out and we have all of our materials that we made here for mixer so we're just going to add in some of the stuff that was missing so let me click this over like so and my material is in here now from bridge so I'm going to double click on this if you drag this out we can see that it's missing the diffuse here and it didn't add a speckler either, but we can add that in manually here. So just open back up my bridge folder here. Or not bridge, my Windows Explorer. And I'm going to bring in ambient occlusion. I'm going to bring in my diffuse. Let's see. I want to bring in, let's say, speckler. And everything else we have is already connected in here. So I'm going to bring in these three items. Click no. Give these a second. 
So now I'm gonna take my speckler map, click on out color, bring it over here to the blue node icon button thing here, come down to reflection, and I'm gonna connect it to my reflection weight. Give that a second to pipe through. Okay, so now I wanna take my diffuse. Actually, I'm gonna hook up my ambient, um, ambient occlusion over to my diffuse here. I'm gonna use color multiplier. Then I'm gonna take my diffuse and just connect it to this diffuse node and we should be good to go. Give it a second to update and then we should have everything that we need on top of our geometry here. Here we go, you can see I updated up here in the viewport. If I close this out, now we have our materials over top of our geometry here. Okay, so now what I wanna do is, let's go up to Redshift, let's add, I'm gonna do a double lighting setup. So I'm gonna add, let's see, I'm gonna go back to my viewport setup. I like this one better. Okay, so what I have up here is, I'm gonna go over to my lighting, come down and make a physical sun. And then I'm just gonna mess with the rotation here until I get the shadows and lighting in this spot that I like. So I think something like gap might look good. I'm gonna check it off in my viewport render. But first I'm going to go over to general and for my intensity multiplier, I'm gonna bring it down to like 0.5 cause I'm gonna do a blend between this and I'm gonna use a blend of an HDR map to kind of get the lighting that I want here. So let me go into my viewport settings and I'm gonna turn off first enable IPR. Let me click render, give us a second to extract the geometry and then I'm just gonna see what my lighting looks like with the sun. So I'm kind of digging the shadows there. Let me go back to my coordinates mess around with this a little bit. Yeah, I kind of like that right there. So what I'm gonna do now is, let me click this off. Come back over to my lighting. I'm gonna make a dumb light. Okay, so once I have my dumb light selected, I'm gonna go over here to path and I have a couple of HDRs that I downloaded from HDRI, or is it HDRIHaven.com, I believe the website is. I'll link it down below, but I use it a lot in my tutorials because we get these really high resolution HDR maps that we can use and they're absolutely free. So I'm gonna use this one called Water Bucket Trail. I'm gonna drag this into my path here, click no. And then under environment, I'm gonna turn off enable background and I'm gonna have enable alpha channel. I just do this by default, it's just a habit because sometimes I've rendered stuff without clicking on the alpha channel and I actually needed it so I had to re-render. So I always just do that out of habit. So now let's get a good angle in here and pick a render view. Let's see what this looks like with our HDR map in here. So it's looking pretty decent. I could probably turn down the exposure. Let's try negative one, see what that looks like. Maybe negative two. Maybe split the difference. Let's do negative 1.5. So I think something around that looks pretty good. I mean, if you really wanted to soften the shadows, you can always go up to like your physical sun Click on a shadow, maybe add some softness to it. I mean, I, I like the hard edges like that, so it's totally up to you, but those options are there if you wanna finagle with that a little bit. And so now what the next step is, we want to bring in some cloud data and I'm using the Pixel Labs Cloud VDB pack. And so to be able to use the VDB cloud, we're gonna have to add some volume to this. So let me go under Redshift go under objects and we make a redshift volume. And then we just wanna select where our VDBs are. And like I said, I'm using the Pixel Lab pack. It has some really cool shapes in there. 
and they give you different resolutions as well. Like the one I used in my image, I'm using version 100 and they give you four different resolutions and you can tell the resolutions by the sizes. So the bigger the size, the higher the resolution, but to set it up, I actually used the low resolution one until I got it the way that I liked. And then I went into the high resolution one for my final render, just because it takes a little bit more to render. So I like setting everything up with the lower resolution here. I'm gonna click on no. And then under my display here, I wanna go to points and I'm gonna make it 100 points. And we gotta drag this up and over. And as you can see, it's really tiny here in my scene. And what I actually wanted to do is engulf this point here. So I'm just gonna raise up my, I'm gonna go to coordinates. Let's make this like 200 by 200 by 200. Find the point that I wanted it to engulf here. Kind of just drag this down into the valleys. So it's interacting with our environment. And if we rendered it now, we wouldn't see it. And that's because we have to add some volume texture to it. So let me drag this up down here. We want to come over to create, then come down to redshift materials and we make a volume material. And then I'm going to click on edit shader graph to bring up this shader graph window. And these are going to be how we determine how our cloud textures are going to look. And so under scatter, we want to click on this down arrow and we want to use the redshift volume density. And there's a couple of tutorials online that are pretty good. The Pixel Lab does a good one. Um, Merck Vision does a good one. And I believe the guys, one of the devs at Redshift does a real in-depth version or tutorial on what all these different attributes do. But what I like to do is I like to mess around with the scatter cohesion and the absorbent. And you wanna lower them down, but you wanna kinda use them in tandem. So let's say like if I go like 0.5, then my absorption, I want to use a 0.5. And then I kind of mess around with it from there until I get something I like. But before we start messing around with that, we have to tell one of our lighting setups that we're going to use that light to be absorbed by our cloud. And so how we do that is I'm going to go over to my dome light and you'll see a volume tag. And it's over, it's actually under your sun as well. So any lights that you have in here, you could do this with. And so I like using a dome light and where it says contribution scale. Let's drag this up to one. And so what this is telling the dome light is we're gonna use 100% of the lighting information from the HDR to light our cloud here, if that makes any sense. At least that's what I think is the one. So let's just go to our render view. Let's render this out and just see what, we're, what our cloud is looking like here. And I'm not seeing anything, and that's because I forgot to add the tag, or not the tag, but the material to my volume. So let me, my, my screen's getting kind of messy here. So I'm gonna take this volume here, this redshift volume material, bring it up to my redshift volume here. And now whenever I render out, we should see our cloud. So now we have our cloud inside of our scene here. And you can see that it's pretty black and gray. And that's what I was saying. So now we have to mess around with these options here. So let's bring our scatter down to 0.3. Maybe our absorption down to 0.2. There we go. So I'm bringing my absorption down to 0.1 brought my scatter up to 0.5. Let's see what it looks like, a 0.7. And remember, this is the lower resolution cloud that we're using, but I'm just using this to kind of dial everything in. And then I'll use a higher resolution one from here. Okay, so it looks like I'm getting pretty decent results from using absorption at 0.1 and scatter at 0.7, you know, it depends on your scene and your lighting as to what these attributes are gonna look like. And so, but for what I'm doing here, I'm thinking this is looking pretty decent. 
So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back up to my volume. And I'm gonna use one of the higher resolution clouds. So I was using version 10 here. Maybe let's kick it up to version three. That's not the highest one. It's like the second highest one. Let's see what this one looks like in our scene. And go. It's looking a little bit better. It's a little bit grainy in here. Um, let's see if we can fix that a little bit, maybe. No, and I'm going to bring this into After Effects as well. So that's going to help kind of clean some of this stuff up as well. No, I'm going to keep it at 0.1, somewhere around there. You may pull out a little bit. So that's, that's the gist of how I built that scene out, though. And so, yeah, it's just going to take some playing around with maybe let's move this instead of 200 let's do 150 by 150 150 somewhere around there and then all I did from here was I duplicated this cloud mixed it all around my scene and everything and that's how I was able to pull out that image and then also to make it look a little bit better I mean we have to go into our redshift settings what I did was I bumped up my max settings to like 256. And there my optimization. Don't really have too much reflection in here, but I just brought everything up to an even six. And then down here, you just do six times three, 18, I believe. And so I think what it is for transparency, I believe you add these three together to get this right here. And this is used in redshift version three, by the way. And then for my primary engine, I did brute force, secondary, I did the point cloud. And then I believe that's it. So let me click on render now. We should see a difference in our render. It's just gonna take a little bit longer because I brought up the samples and I'm using brute force now, but we should be able to get a general idea. Okay, so this took about a minute to uh, preview out and that's what the settings that I just put in here. And um, as you can see, the clouds looking a lot better. The lighting is a little bit, um, it's a little bit blown out here. So, I mean, I'm gonna go up to my physical sun, probably bring the lighting down a little bit on that, but I don't wanna bore you guys going back and forth with just the nitpick in there. But I wanna show you guys what I did to export this out. And so what I wanna do from here, like I have a pretty good scene. I wanna export this out so that I can, can do compositing and after effects. So I wanna go over to my AOV manager and then all I did was I brought in a depth map and I brought in a shadow map. And then under my depth map, I did an actual tutorial on just the depth maps in Cinema 4D Redshift. But just as a quick overview, what I like to do is for my depth mode, I go to normalize. And then for my use camera information here, I don't use the camera information. I click that off and I just use the manual sliders here. So I usually slide this up a little bit. And then that will give us a depth mask that we can export out of Cinema 4D. Now I can actually use that to kind of blend in some of the fog as well once we're in After Effects. And so these are the only two AOV maps that I used for this one in particular. So I'll show you my render setup. If I go to save and make a open EXR, like I said, I always click on alpha channel, just something that I always do. And then for my multi-pass, I just use the PNG at 16 bit. And then I always make a AEC file. So under my compositing project file tag, I click everything on, I'm using After Effects. And so if you wanna see the compositing that I did in After Effects, stick around. I'm gonna render this out and then we're gonna bring everything into After Effects. I just do a little bit of compositing, use some magic bullet looks and stuff in there, but I'll render this out and I'll catch you guys in After Effects. Okay, so what I have here is the final result that I rendered out yesterday. This is what I actually posted on social media yesterday. So I'm just going to show you the files and how I did everything here at After Effects. So let me hit Control I. Let me find where I have the AEC file that I rendered out. 
So if we go into pre-render, there we go. So once I import my AEC file, it brings under my special passes. It gives me my shadow, my depth map, and my original diffuse layer. So what I'm gonna do from here is drag this up here under comps, double click that. And so this is the, um, this is a composition that the AEC file gives you. I'm going to delete my shadow, but you can see it brings in camera information as well. And I'm just going to start from scratch. So I'm going to bring in my color layer here. I'm going to add some levels. Let me drag my levels to the right so I get a nice, nice look on here. So somewhere around there should look pretty cool. And then now what I want to do is I want to bring in my shadow layer. So when you bring in your shadows, for some reason from Redshift, this is what your shadows would look like. So what I do is I make it a black and white image or a grayscale image. I bring in my hue, knock the saturation all the way down so that it's a grayscale. Then let me add some levels to this as well. Actually, before I do levels, let me invert it. So let me drag this down. Go to my effects and presets, type in invert. There we go, something like that. Now I'm gonna turn on my levels until I get some nice crisp shadow passes in here. And then what I do from here is I come under my mode down here and I multiply it. So now if I turn this on and off, you see we have a shadow pass that we could just kind of, if I hit T on my keyboard, just turn on the opacity just to add a little bit more shadow in here, give it that sinister look. And then I have a depth pass here as well. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click and drag this down to my composition. And then I'm going to add a levels to this. And the reason I do that is because if I want to bring in like the, um, like a depth of field pass or something like that, it usually will do it off the original information of the layer. And so what I'll do is I'll make my adjustments like so. And then bring in my depth pass over top. And so if I brought in like a, a depth of field camera lens blur or whatever, this is the information that it will work off of. And I'll actually do a tutorial on this one as well. I'll link that so that you guys can see it if you wanna see more in depth what I'm talking about. But from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a screen, then hit T on my keyboard, bring this down to about 70%. So that adds a little bit of fog in the area about keeping the, the foreground in front of us a little bit cleaner. So from here, I just go maybe add an adjustment layer. Let me add some curves maybe. Bring this down like so. There we go. Then I'm just gonna name this one curves so I know exactly what that is. Add another adjustment layer. Let's name this one flare. And I have optical flares, but if you have only have the default flares, you can always use the lens flare within After Effects here. Drag this up way off the screen. Use the 105 Prime. Maybe raise down the brightness a little bit. So it's just to add a little bit of highlight up in the corner there and also have some of that I'm not sure what that's called. Um, chromatic abrasion, I guess you would call that flare thing that's there. I don't know, it just adds a little bit of detail there. I like it, so it is what it is. Add another adjustment layer. I'm gonna name this one vignette. So I like using the red giant vignette that I have here, the misfire vignette. Bring down the intensity a little bit here. So you can see what it's doing is darkening the edges a little bit. So that's bringing the focal point more towards the center here. 
So something like that. Then the icing on the cake will be another Magic Bullet or another Red Giant plugin called Magic Bullet Looks, which I really like a lot. And this is an older version. I haven't upgraded this actually, but I'm using the older version of Looks, but it gives you a whole bunch of cool presets. I mean, I use Looks a lot. Like I'm just scrolling through these and it's already making our image look pretty epic there. So you just find something that you're really happy with. I can't remember the one I used yesterday. I think I might've used this one maybe, but I'm liking the one that this Hartford Peels looks like. So let me click on that. Then bring my strength down like 75, maybe 50, split the diff, something like that. And then that's how I built this image out from World Creator, Dim Earth, Cinema 4D, Redshift, After Effects, and um, yeah, I think that's everything. I'm not thinking I'm missing anything. I know it's a lot of steps to go through, but it's like I own these programs and I like to, you know, experiment a lot with the different programs to try to make them work together. And so this is my latest creation here and I hope you guys like this. So hopefully this helped you guys out. You know, I know it's a lot of programs that I'm using in there, but these are programs that are used on a day-to-day -day basis. And so I like using each program to its strength to come out with really dope objects. So leave me a comment down below if this did help you out or if there's some stuff in there that I could have did differently. Let's get a conversation going again so that we can start, you know, pushing the community forward. We all learn off each other. And so subscribe to my channel. Make sure you click that thumbs up. Help me out. And until next time, keep creating. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.